we start with the main studs. We've cleaned it earlier, but we're spraying WD-40 right now and just wiping it off with a shop towel. Do not use a tissue paper or a rag because it might leave some lint on the threads, which will throw off your torque readings or the clamping force. Here we're wiping it now. And see how dirty it gets, the shop towel, even though it's, we've already cleaned the bolts. Okay, being meticulous about it, we actually cleaned it again. So this is a 7-Eleven fruit salad container. We super glued the cap at the bottom so it doesn't turn around. This is a mixture we've created. It's 30% engine oil, 40% WD-40, and 30% mineral spirits. On a separate video, we will explain why we came up with this certain mixture. And now we soak the threads and we let it sit for a bit. Keep them safe to avoid getting dirt or debris. This is number five main cap. And we want to reiterate, and we can't repeat it enough, to make sure this mating surface, both sides, are always clean before you assemble. Do not wipe it with a rag or tissue paper because it might leave even like a hair strand might throw off the bearing crush. And when the bearing crush is off, you change your oil clearances. It be, you basically kind of like throw away the oil clearances that you shot for in the first place. Okay, here's a set of Taiho main bearings. Always make sure you assemble clean. Here we mic up the crankshaft with a micrometer. We measured the number three journal and we have to measure it in two different axes just to make sure it's round. And we get 21651. And we deduce that to the number of the main bearing tunnel that we get. We're using a dial bore gauge and we got a 21667. And the result from that is your bearing clearance. Usually it's not that common that you would need to micro polish the crank just to get a little bit more oil clearance. But if needed, a lot of machine shops could usually do this job with a good result. If building an engine is not something regular that you do, then these tools like the micrometer, dial bore gauge, they seem expensive. But that's where the plastic gauge becomes a handy tool. And it's quite accurate when used correctly. We actually use that to double check all the work that we do, just to be sure there are no mishaps. Now you gotta be extra careful dropping the crank into the block. We don't want you hitting anything or damaging bearings and just adding headache to the whole whole project. Now we're here putting on the main caps in order. You gotta be careful not to ding or hit the main journals. Now the main studs that's been soaking in our oil mix. Now on to the plastic gauge. Let's go! You gotta actually press the plastic gauge a little bit to the main journal. We don't want it falling off or you can actually just breathe on it and it'll fly away. So we gotta make sure it's stuck. Now we place the number three main cap so that we can torque it in sequence. And the last remaining two main studs for the number three cap. Now 
Okay, now we're gonna target to 22 feet hounds for the first step in the right sequence, of course. Oh, and don't turn the crank because you're gonna smidge the plastic gauge. For the second and last step, 56 foot pounds. Okay, now I'm going to loosen it by hand off the camera. Alright, now the number three is loosened up. So we got to shake it, you know. Alright, shake it like it's, like it's a horse. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Alright, so now we can check the plastic gate. Hey, here we are now. And you can see that the visibility is actually quite good. So now let's check. Yep, as we said, it's a little accurate when used properly. It's a little over 15, but not up to 0 0.002. Not bad. We sometimes check on the crank, but this time it was more visible on the bearings, as you can see there. So we hope this would entice you guys to use a plastic gauge whenever you're rebuilding. A plastic gauge is better than guesswork. And somehow it's accurate. And I guess with more practice, you guys will always get it right. We really enjoy sharing all this information and wisdom to you guys. So subscribe because we'll have more with regards to assembly lube on how we use it and why we use it soon camp the green and the reasons for it take it easy and always be safe